Hello everyone, welcome to Aryan Tutorials on <coughs> Kinematics of Machines and in this video lecture we are going to discuss about uh, what do you mean by constrained motion and what are the different types and what are the different types of joints and what do you mean by degrees of freedom okay so first we try to see uh, the definition for constrained motion so that is uh, if any object or link moves only in a particular direction even which in the direction of applied force then the object or link is said to be in a constrained motion that means uh, when the two links are connected and one link with respect to the other link is moving only in a definite direction other than any different directions even which is in the direction of the force then that link is said to be in a constrained motion okay so uh, first we see different types of the constrained motion so first one is completely constrained motion and second one is incompletely constrained motion and third one is successfully constrained motion these are the different types of the constrained motions we can observe uh, when we a make a particular mechanism by joining the number of links okay so for these three also we try to see the definition so first one is completely constrained motion here uh, in a pair of elements or links if the motion of one element takes place only in one particular direction irrespective of the direction of the force then the motion between the elements can be called as completely constrained motion so this definition is somewhat somewhat similar to the constrained motion only based upon that a, we consider it is as a completely constrained motion okay one element with respect to the another element is moving only in a particular uh, direction irrespective of the direction of force that means if we change the direction of the force also if the link is moving only in a particular direction then that kind of the motion between the two elements can be called as here completely constrained motion example we see piston and cylinder of reciprocating steam engine as the piston only reciprocates in a definite direction and one more example we can see that uh, square bar in a square hole so when you see the piston inside the cylinder of reciprocating steam engine that uh, piston only reciprocate the it doesn't rotate so that kind of the motion we can consider between the piston and cylinder as a constrained motion and similarly if you take the basic example uh, insert, inserting a square bar inside a square hole okay so let us see the example uh, that is a square bar okay which is inserted in a square hole when you see in a 3d view you can see like this so this square bar uh, when you try to apply the force this bar will try to only reciprocate inside the square hole okay it doesn't rotate because the shape we have given as a square hole so in this condition the motion between these two uh, square hole component the square bar component is called as completely constrained motion okay next uh, we see incompletely constrained motion what do you mean by incompletely constrained motion it is completely opposite to the completely constrained motion so let us see the definition in a pair of elements or links if the motion of one element takes place in different directions with respect sorry with change in the direction of the force then the motion between the elements can be called as incomplete constrained motion okay so that means uh, when the two links are connected uh, one link with respect to the another link is changing its motion in different directions based upon changing the direction of the force then the motion between the two elements can be called as here incompletely constrained motion okay the example we can take a square shaft which is inserted in a square hole okay that means uh, as the shaft rotates and slides uh, with change in the direction of force so let us see the example okay this is the example we can consider in a square hole component we have inserted a shaft so in this condition uh, this shaft can reciprocate as well as the rotate inside the inside the hole okay that is the circular hole hole component uh, it will uh, rotate and as well as it will slide okay this is the uh, example we can consider for incompletely constrained motion next third one is uh, successfully constrained motion what do you mean by successfully constrained motion uh, in a pair of elements or links if the motion is completely motion is not complete not constrained by themselves but by some other means then the motion between the elements can be called as successfully constrained motion that means here uh, basically the two components connected together are in uh, incompletely constrained motion and we can make it uh, into uh, com completely constrained motion by the application of some external forces or by giving some external loads in that condition we can say that the motion between the two elements as successfully constrained motion that means with the help of external elements or external forces we are making the motion between the two elements as constrained so in that condition we can call it as successfully constrained motion so let us see the example that example is footstep bearing 
so in this footstep bearing that shaft inside the uh, bearing can rotate as well as reciprocate that means it can move up and down and as well as it can rotate with respect to its axis so in that condition if you apply any load on it okay so when we apply the load automatically that shaft uh, avoids the uh, reciprocating motion and it can have only rotational motion with respect to its axis okay this is the 3d view okay this uh, green color part is the bearing and this uh, white color one is the shaft and this blue color one is load so with the help of this load we can resist or we can stop the up and down motion of the shaft so that the shaft can only rotate that means we are making it to move only in a definite direction as in the form of rotation so in this condition uh, this uh, two elements can be called as here successfully sorry two elements can be said that they are in successfully constrained motion okay so that is about successfully constrained motion next uh, we see the types of joints what are the different types of joints we have there are mainly three types of joints first one is binary joint and second one is ternary joint and third one is quaternary joint so that means here the joint we are considering means we need to uh, join two elements or links at a particular point uh, with the help of a joint only so based upon connection of two elements or links we have three types of joints okay first one is binary joint and what is the definition uh, when two links are connected at a point then the joint is called binary joint so we know already meaning for binary binary means two so when the two links are only connected at a particular point then the joint formed can be called as binary joint okay this is an example uh, which are arranged in a triangular form three links are connected so total how many joints it is having means one two three binary joints so the number of binary joints we can uh, we can write it as three okay uh, we can call it as binary joint or simply we can call it as a joint also okay and next we go for ternary joint what do i mean by ternary in the name itself three so when three links are connected at a point then the joint is called ternary joint okay so in this ternary joint how many joints we need to consider means here one ternary joint is equal to two binary joints that means one ternary joint means we need to take number of joints as two okay that we need to remember here so let us see an example okay here uh, uh, four links are connected and in this thing how many joints it is going to have means based upon the links connected total how many links sorry sorry total how many links here one two three four five six links are connected so in this six links uh, how many ternary joints are here when you observe this one is ternary and this one is ternary and remaining are binary okay based upon that we need to find what are the number of joints that this mechanism is going to have and once again remember one ternary joint is equal to two binary joints so let us try to find find it or we try to understand how it can form uh, two joints uh, when it is of ternary joint so let us see here uh, one link i have taken and this link is connected with another link so when these two links are connected it is considered as one joint or one binary joint and these two links as a particular joint is taken to join with another link okay that means these uh, two links are already having one joint and when these two links are joined with a third link means it is making another joint at the same point these two links are maintaining another joint with the third link so total how many joints we can consider two joints we can consider okay so initially two links are making one joint and the third link is making another joint so total it is of two joints that is only one ternary joint is equal to two binary joints next we try to find number of binary joints or joints is equal to total how many binary joints are one two three three binary joints so as it is number of joints becomes three plus how many ternary joints are there two ternary joints so two into two ternary joints uh, one one ternary joint is called how many joints two joints so automatically two into two will give you what are the number of joints uh, those ternary joints are going to have okay so that is equal to three plus two into two it becomes four okay here two joints here two joints okay so two into two becomes four okay or two plus two becomes four so finally we have seven number of joints that is about finding the number of joints when the mechanism consists of ternary joints next we go for quaternary joint 
So quaternary means here when four links are connected at a point, then the joint is called as quaternary joint. Similarly, here one quaternary joint is equal to three binary joints. Okay, remember one quaternary joint means three binary joints we need to consider. Next, let us see the example. Okay, total how many links? Seven links are connected here. Okay, one, two, and three, four, five, six, and this one is seventh link. Okay. So this joint is going to have a quaternary joint. So again, we try to analyze how we need to uh, consider one quaternary joint is equal to three binary joint. Okay, in the same way. So one link have taken and it is connected with another link. One joint it has made. And next it is connected with third link and second joint it has made. And next fourth link is connected total third joint it has made. So total how many joints we need to consider? Three joints we need to consider whenever it, a mechanism uh, has uh, one quaternary joint okay so now again we try to find uh, number of joints here number of binary joints or joints is equal to first we need to identify binary joints one two two binary joints are there so two plus how many ternary joints uh, one two ternary joints so two into two plus how many quaternary joints here one quaternary joint is there so one into three okay total it will give you two plus 4 plus 3 so total it becomes how much 9 number of joints this mechanism is having so in this way we need to find how many number of joints the mechanism is going to have that is about types of joints next we go for degrees of freedom what do you mean by degrees of freedom so degrees of freedom is uh, defined as the mobility of mechanism when uh, which is used to find the position of various links in a coordinate system okay so degrees of freedom means in how many degrees it can uh, the mechanism can move uh, uh, freely and at the same time this degrees of freedom can be used for finding the position of each and every link in a coordinate system okay now we try to analyze uh, uh, how many degrees of freedom a particular link is going to have so i have taken one link uh, which can move uh, when it is placed on a plane and it can move in x direction it can move in y direction also and it can rotate also so when you take a link on a particular plane now we can say that it can move in three directions so degrees of freedom for this particular link is three and now i would like to take the same link and it is connected with the third, uh, second link which is a fixed in position so when uh, it is connected to another link which is in fixed position this link will lose the moment in x direction and as well as the moment in y direction but it can have only the rotation uh, motion rotational motion with respect to the joint we have given to the fixed link that means it is having only one degree of freedom that is in the form of rotation no translation no translation in x and no translation in y direction but it can rotate only so total degrees of freedom it can uh, be considered as a three degrees of freedom not three it should be one so that is three minus two how many degrees of freedom it is losing total two degrees of freedom it is losing so three minus two it will give you one okay so try to remember when it is pin jointed it will lose two degrees of freedom and finally it can have only rotational motion that is of one degree of freedom okay now we try to uh, analyze the Kurzweil criteria of uh, which will derive the equation for finding the degrees of freedom first take a uh, four bar mechanism so here uh, our four links are placed on a particular plane uh, they are still not connected and in this condition number of links we can take four and a number of degrees of freedom means each and every link can have three degrees of freedom because they are not fixed and they are not connected together so total we can write it as four into three and similarly we can write it as uh, if you consider links as n we can write it as n into three okay and in next condition i have fixed uh, one link so when i have fixed one link this link will lose each and every degrees of freedom it doesn't move in x direction it doesn't move in y direction it doesn't rotate also okay that means uh, other than this link the remaining links can have all degrees of freedom in this condition that means we can consider in place of n as n minus one so it can be written as one link is fixed means it loses all three degrees of freedom so we can write it as three into n minus one so uh, from all four only three links are having three into three will give you degrees of freedom for this particular mechanism okay but when i connect when i connect to one link with the first fixed link this link will lose how many degrees of freedom 
2 degrees of freedom why because when we fix when we fix when you connect the link to the fixed line it doesn't move in x and y but it can rotate only so that means it is losing how many degrees of freedom 2 degrees of freedom here this 3 into n minus 1 will give you available degrees of freedom okay from these available degrees of freedom we need to subtract how many degrees of freedom it is losing so total how many degrees minus 2 similarly when i connect this third link to the second link so this third link also loses 2 degrees of freedom and it will have only rotational motion so again this mechanism is losing two more degrees of freedom next similarly if i connect this fourth link to the third link and it also loses two degrees of freedom okay so finally and this is connected to this one so finally it can have all rotational motions only okay so total it is losing again two degrees of freedom so in this condition uh, here we, we, uh, if we observe how many uh, how many times it is losing the two degrees of freedom means one two three four so based upon the number of links it is having okay so the equation can be written as three into n minus one minus two j so how many joints we are going to give based upon that it is going to lose two degrees of freedom okay so the equation can be written as three into n minus one minus 2j this is uh, for the plane mechanisms when it is not having any higher pair but if the mechanism consists of a higher pair in this condition from the available degrees of freedom uh, we need to subtract how many higher pairs it is going to have so why we need to subtract means how many degrees of freedom it is going to lose means one degree of freedom it will lose it can move in x direction it can rotate but it doesn't move in y direction so that means it is losing one degree of freedom so one higher pair means it is going to lose one degree of freedom so then if you subtract number of higher pairs from the available degrees of freedom we'll get the degrees of freedom for a particular mechanism which is consisting of higher pairs so try to write the equation degrees of freedom is equal to 3 into n minus 1 minus 2j is the available degrees of freedom from which we need to subtract the number of higher pairs then we'll get the degrees of freedom for the the mechanism which is having higher pain also okay this is about degrees of freedom okay i hope you understood if you still have any doubts please feel free to give a comment to my video so that i'll try to clarify your doubts once again thanks for watching my video thank you all